was alive, Jimmy. Somehow, miraculously, I was alive. Some twist of fate, some hand of destiny, but I was alive. Strange as this new world was, I knew Tor must have come this way. And it was my task to find him. And it happened like this. The sun beat down on me relentlessly. The heat was unbearable. I was exhausted. Yet I could not stop. I had to go on. For seven weeks I trudged across the desert. On the second day... Please, comrade, if we may. I think we can skip the details, unless you consider them to be particularly relevant to the location of Little Orpheus. Of course, General. We will simply omit the tale of the singing chasm, the oasis of mirrors, the sightings of Tolls Mienk aloft on their pterodactyls carrying parts of my crashed rocket drill over the horizon to Lemuria. Wait! The what? Singing chasm? Not that bit. Uh, the rocket drill. Oh yes, General, the rocket drill. But what did Toll want with it? And why Lemuria? Lemuria? Lemuria, General! I am not familiar with this le le Lemuria, comrade. Well, that is because it does not exist, General. Or at least, so I thought. Strange crystals seem to exert an extraordinary hold over the stone blocks and arches. When they hummed, the whole city remade itself. Where they were missing, clearly looted by some villainous thief, the city was fallen to ruin. It was like a vast musical instrument, vandalized and yet still attempting to toot. I am sure our engineers would be fascinated and baffled in equal measure. If the whole department hadn't been arrested for sedition last week, I would happily convey it to their skeptical ears. Sedition, General? Really? It is unfortunate news indeed. I am joking, comrade.
Oh yes, the Mank for here, all right. Which meant whatever dastardly scheme Toll had, it was to be enacted on these burning sands. And you will explain this in due course, I imagine. Well, imminently, General. What you need to know first is this. I have told you already how parts of the devices the enslaved Mienk were forced to wear came from the surface. Radio parts and so on, yes, from what you have told me. Assuming there were plenty of lost ships in the ocean as you claim, for Toll to have dredged up what he needed to assemble them. Aha! Good! You are one step ahead of me, General. I said assuming. Of course, assuming. I gazed in awe at the buildings rising and falling around me. I realized that the other major component of those mind-controlling helmets was crystal. Toll had raided Lemuria for them. He knew the city. He knew the crystals could amplify vibrations and waves and was using them to boost the signal of the radio parts to exert his control over the men. Which meant... Yes? Imagine, General. What such amplification could achieve when fused to the finest atomic science our great Soviet civilization has produced? Wait, I do not understand. You said Tull was planning on using the bomb to shatter the Earth's crust to return to the surface. A tragic mistake, General. I recognized the extent of his mad ambitions. You mean to imply Tull would have attempted to enslave the Russian people? The will of the Soviet citizen is mighty and strong. To you, perhaps, as a trained warrior. But consider, perhaps instead, a humble son of a toy maker from Tomsk. Ah, yes. Perhaps we have our share of symbols, after all. The vast pictograms told of a history of wonders. They seemed to suggest the Lemurians were travelers from another world, where a mysterious clock seemed to stand. That is very mysterious. As mysterious as the location of Little Orpheus, perhaps. <laughs> yes, of course, General. I am just getting to that.
as I bravely explored that ancient city, a question was gnawing at my mind. What did it mean that the Lemurians had foreseen the coming of Tol? And who was the man from above that was celebrated as the savior of the Mienf? It was almost as if they could read the future in their crystals. of Lemuria tolled and tolled, a roaring symphony, a crescendo of peals that set the city dancing, each note causing the crystals to shimmer and cascade with light. But the sandstorm was no natural phenomenon, and the bells did not ring for celebration. Something was very wrong here. Uh, aside from the pterodactyls and the men and the dancing stones and the ancient magical prophecies and the crystals and now the giant bells, you mean? If you don't want me to continue, General, then I can easily just quietly go home. Don't think Chepucho will get you out of this one, comrade. magical structures, a righteous fire in my heart. I was like the Brynja Nikic, prepared to strike at the dragon who threatened my homeland. Your heroism is only surpassed by your modesty. On the contrary, General, I chose the Brynja carefully. Like him, I am a simple peasant. It was fate that chose me to descend to the Earth's core. It was General Kumanyin who chose you to descend to the Earth's core. But don't let that get in the way of your story. Well then, award General Polkovnik Kamanyin the highest medal in the world! He already has several of those. I cannot take credit for his wisdom in sending me. Once a rocket drill ship, built to burrow into the earth, was now a mighty vessel, repurposed to blast off into the skies!
there was no doubt the toll was headed for the strange world with its clock. Although to what end, I was yet to understand. But there was no time to consider. No time for questions. on the rocket. Little Orpheus was on the rocket. And wherever they were headed, I must head there too, to thwart his plans, recover my drill, and save the world! Will our enthusiastic yet disorientated hero be burnt to a cinder by the rocket's engines? Will he be smashed into the rock that surely, surely must be beyond the Lemurian skies? Does Nikolai Petrovich Kamanian really need any more medals? What was the strange clock, and what could it all mean? All of these questions, and more, will be answered, if you're extremely lucky, in the next exciting episode of Little Obvious!